Snakes are very important in the environment. They are a key link in the food chain. Um, snakes are best known for their role at controlling rodent numbers. Uh, while we have a lot of South African rats and mice, indigenous species, we also have the invasive house rat, who's a pest species who's often heard running around in ceilings. This is a forest cobra. This is found in northern KwaZulu-Natal. And this snake controls the numbers of many different animals. It feeds on rodents, frogs, might even eat birds, and even other snakes. Okay. Snakes come into your garden for various different reasons. Firstly, this is Africa. There's a lot of snakes, a lot of bush around. Also, with habitat destruction being a continuous threat to snakes, they're getting pushed out of their natural habitat, and so they're seeking refuge in our homes and gardens. So snakes like this, this is the Natal green snake. They'll come into your garden looking for mainly lizards, but they'll also eat frogs. With habitat destruction being a continuous threat, they are constantly being pushed out of their natural environments. Therefore, they have to look for somewhere to live, and that's usually our gardens and homes. So if you have a lot of rats around, lizards, frogs, snakes will come for that. And also if you have a lot of places for them to hide, piles of wood, logs, rubble, bricks, any, anywhere like that, that's where snakes will come to hide. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. They, having snakes in the garden is a good thing. It's, you can form your own little nature reserve in your back garden. This little snake is called a brown water snake. It's a harmless species, very common in KwaZulu-Natal, and it moves at night time where it hunts for frogs. In the Zulu culture, this snake is known as Ivuzo Manzi, and it's believed that if you're bitten by this snake, you need to go and drink from the nearest river before the snake does. Now, that's obviously not true, and there's many false beliefs about how to treat snake bites. Sucking the venom out of the, of the bite site, cutting around where you've been bitten. I've been told you can hold on to an electric fence and the shock will stop the venom. There's many strange beliefs about treating snake bites. Yeah, don't believe any of them. The only thing you should focus on if you're bitten by a snake is getting to hospital. That's the priority. I'm sure you'll have all heard stories about black mambas chasing and attacking people. Yeah, but these are simply not true. The black mamba is a very misunderstood animal. They are nervous and shy, but as any snake catcher will tell you, they don't attack people. They can see we're bigger than them, and they are terrified of us. You don't need to worry about them chasing after you. They're not people. They're not aggressive. They just want to be left alone. The most important thing to do when you see a snake is to leave it alone. That's the number one rule. Don't go near it, don't try and catch it, don't try and kill it, because that's when you're going to put yourself at risk. If you do have a snake in your garden or in your house, Call your local snake catcher for advice or to come and remove it. Okay, some of the times it might, the snake might be harmless. If not, it, it is better to have that snake removed. Um, but please always give them a wide berth um, and just don't go near them. This is the Rhombic Nightadder. It's the most common venomous snake species in many parts of the province. It's quite easy to identify. If you look on its body, it's got those diamond markings. And towards the head, they've got that V marking at the back of the head. There hasn't been a recorded fatality from the snake. A bite should still be considered serious and you should definitely go to hospital. Rather be safe than sorry. The snake feeds only on toads. Those big brown frogs that people like to call bullfrogs, that's all the snake eats. He doesn't eat rats. So this little snake is the herald snake and it's a very common species in suburbia. Um, it's often found in pool pumps or seen at nighttime cruising around gardens. That's where it hunts frogs. Now the herald snake is often confused for the black mamba because of its coloration. Black mambas are grey and matte appearance. The herald is more an olive brown. Two ways in which you can identify the herald snake are the white speckles on its body and also the head's quite dark, especially compared to the body. It's got a very dark head. These snakes put on a big defensive show and this often scares people into thinking that they're mambas or puff adders. So they curl up, flatten their heads and strike repeatedly. Yeah, this is a snake I get called for every day and it's always described as a green mamba with black spots. All right, it's the spotted bush snake. It's by far the most common snake in the greater Durban area. It's totally harmless. It feeds on geckos mostly and so they're often found around homes. Um, the green mamba is much larger, a plain emerald green and it's also quite a lot thicker. And the green mamba is restricted to coastal forests along the province. It's not a species you're going to find inland. This is one of the country's most common and widespread snake species. It's the brown house snake. It's a harmless species, it's non-venomous, and they're great to have around because of that and also that they feed on rats. They're powerful constrictors, so when they grab a rat, they wrap their body around and put the squeeze on. That's how they kill their prey, because they don't have venom. It's nocturnal, it moves around at night time, 
And so during the day, people often find them in wood piles, uh, in piles of bricks, rubble. It can be identified by its coloration, but also those creamy colored stripes going down the body. You'll see there's quite a distinctive V on the head, but those stripes go quite a way down the body. And they've got a pearl white belly. As I'm sure you can tell, or guess by me wearing this visor, this is a spitting cobra. It's the Mozambique spitting cobra. It's a very common snake species throughout most of the province, and it's actually responsible for the most snake bites each year. And that's because it's so common and often found around homes. Now it has the most amazing defensive ability, which you all know, and that's the ability to spray its venom. They can spray their venom two to three meters in length, and they're accurate too. They and if they hit you in the eyes, it burns like heck. You've got a, it feels like sand and soap in your eyes. It's very uncomfortable and painful. If this snake spits venom into your eyes, you need to rinse it out immediately with water. Rinse for a good 10 to 15 minutes. Um, milk is a bit of an old wives' tale. Water is definitely your best bet. And they often spit in the eyes of dogs. If it does happen to your dogs, do the same as what you do to you. Rinse the venom out with water.